Welcome to TFR Let's Talk. I'm your host, Swapin Bhatia, and my next guest is Sergey Igorov, co founder and CEO at Atomic Jar. Sergey, it's great to have you on the show. Thanks for having me. It's a big pleasure. If I'm not wrong, Atomic Jar is a kind of developer focused SaaS company that kind of tries to bring tea of, I think, testing to DevOps experience and help enterprises streamline their testing by shifting it to LED. So I feel it's a more about technology as much as it's about culture. So if I'm not wrong, please explain what the company is all about. You're absolutely right. It's a mix of technology and the culture because what we observed is that DevOps changed many things when we de how we deploy software, how we develop software, but not really how we test software. We've been stuck with uh, old approaches, with end-to-end -end testing, with browser testing, but we are here in 2020s and we need a modern approach to testing. And that's what Atomic Jar will be doing. We'll be bringing test containers, um, the library we created that modernized testing to the masses and uh, make it easier to use it. If I ask you, how would you define integration testing and how would you, there may be a lot of myths about it too. So if you can just demystify those as well, what it is, what it is not. It's a great question because it's been a while since we coined the word integration testing, but what it, does, does, what it actually means is not very well defined. It's some people think that we talk about uh, broader testing when we deploy integration testing environment, uh, just let's say we replicate production environment and then we test that everything works correctly. Or maybe we run just one service and uh, then we revise that this single service integrated into some environment works correctly. And I'm a big fan of the definition of integration testing where it's defined as narrow integration testing. Um, there is a great article by, by Martin Fowler uh, describing this. And uh, then it, he says that it's okay to say that integration testing can be performed in an environment where multiple services are deployed, but it's not necessary. And it can be as simple as a single service being executed in an environment which is narrowed to the service dependencies. And then maybe some contract testing to verify the interaction with other services. So I stick to this definition of integration testing. And because of that, there is also common uh, thinking that integration testing can be treated as system testing. And I believe this is the biggest, what, is, what it's not. Um, it's not system testing. We are not talking about staging environments. We just talk about how we test something, not with unit tests, but with the next step of testing. Right. Can you also talk about the importance of testing? I'm pretty sure that everybody does know the importance of testing, especially when you look at the whole CI CD pipeline. But uh, these days we do talk about, you know, uh, cultural shift like SREs where reliability is becoming important. Uh, we talk about observability and all those things. But if you don't test your application, your workloads, uh, how can you integrate all of that? So talk about the importance of testing and why companies should have, or developers or DevOps or sorry, whoever you talk to should have that as core part of their strategy. What really affected uh, companies' decisions that they should start doing testing is actually the shift towards microservices and the way we develop software nowadays, because like most of services we develop look like some things that obtains some something from some IO source, let's say from database, perform some transformations and returns to some other IO um, output, uh, such as REST endpoint, for example, or maybe Kafka to topic or something like this. And uh, this transformation can be trivial, but the queries we write are um, what makes our service uh, perform uh, and uh, what makes the business logic of our services. And uh, unit testing, which used to be a common practice for testing, um, is not enough because we cannot unit test database behavior. We need this database to run this test. And this is why integration testing becomes more and more popular. And if we talk about the question, why should we test in the first place, then I believe it becomes the question as of uh, why we shouldn't be testing what's stopping us from testing. Because if we get the right tools, if we get the right performance of our tests, then there is no reason to not have automated tests that help us uh, avoid major issues. And uh, in modern world, software gets updated so often that we need to be able to detect that, okay, we updated, let's say, Spring Boot, which is popular Java framework, to a major version, and our configuration works correctly. How do we verify it without deploying to production? Well. 
we run tests. One more thing that is there that can you talk about, uh, as we were saying, uh, tech aspect and cultural aspect. Uh, technology is there, tech solutions are there, open source projects are there, but we also need cultural shift. When you talk about shifting left, it's more about culture as well. So can you talk about the importance of culture and how companies should approach that? For a very long time, the assumption was that QA should be a dedicated team who tests the software, and then there are developers who write the software and delegate the testing to the QA team. And it worked well, and there is a certain mindset of QA engineers that sometimes is not present in developers' minds and how they test it. There are famous jokes about you know, QA entering bar and ordering minus one beer, 99,000 beers, and so on and so forth. So it's, a, it's actually a real thing. Like Some developers would not try to test these uh, edge cases. And it also tells us that it's, it's important to cover all aspects of testing, not to focus on a single aspect such as integration testing. But still, some things um, developers know better how to test them. And uh, it would be wa very wa uh, wasteful um, to spend QA's time uh, testing some things that's purely an interaction between the service and the database. And developers know much better how to test it. Not to mention that the shift left uh, focus um, helps developers test faster, much faster, because they can do it on their machines in ideal co case. And uh, with QA uh, team, it would require uh, deploying to some staging environment and uh, going through the whole process of deployment. So similar how uh, DevOps process and uh, DevOps practices changed how we deploy, where developers can define infrastructure, for example, with infrastructure as code. In, 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 in case of uh, testing, developers can now do testing as code, including some advanced uh, scenarios where they test with production components. Right. Also, since we are talking about culture aspect and earlier we were also talking about DevOps, the sorries and all those things. So if you look at testing itself, even if now we are seeing the rules and jobs are kind of consolidating, uh, whose responsibility is testing or whose responsibility should be testing? In a team, I've seen a lot of success where testing becomes purely the responsibility of developers because they use it as part of their development process. They use testing as basically the only way to verify that what they just created, what they just developed, it works correctly, and uh, they should be confident shipping it. And um, it's all connected. Uh, and Going back to DevOps a little, uh, we're also talking about trunk first development where everything in master goes to production eventually and uh, or main branch. And um, in this case, uh, being able to test early gives us confidence that our main branch behaves correctly. So um, developers who are responsible for contributing to this main branch uh, would be looking for options how to verify that their changes work correctly. And uh, we end up with testing because that's the approach that the only approach that helps uh, testing not only today, but in the future, because one can test it locally by starting the service and clicking through UI, for example, and saying, yeah, it's working, I just test it. But then the very next day, uh, some minor change would break it. And automated testing would keep it uh, would keep the status up to date always because you always see the result of this automated test and um, that's that's basically what what makes testing the only way of um, reliably checking uh, and uh, constantly checking the quality of the software. Excellent. Thanks for explaining that. We have also seen a kind of pattern or trend of you know just copying the uh, production environment. Uh, why is it not a great strategy according to you? This strategy um, comes with some pluses, but also some major uh, downsides. So the plus would be that um, you get more or less uh, the production environment. Uh, there are some limitations. Sometimes it can be minor. Sometimes it can be major. Uh, maybe there is some external service provider that only works in production, but they do not provide staging environments. And obviously, one would not want to connect to payment gateway from staging environment that uh, serves production transactions. But um, this approach could work. The thing is, um, sometimes one may not even have production environment. For example, a new feature is being developed or a new service is being created. There is no production environment yet. There is nothing to copy, but developer needs to test it. And obviously, deploying to production just so that you can start testing it would be a wrong strategy, I would say. And um, with 
integration testing as opposed to um, system testing or like let's copy production testing because I don't really, really know how to name it. Um, it doesn't feel like integration testing to be honest, but in a way it is. So uh, let's just refer to it as another way of doing integration testing. With uh, production-like uh, testing, one also loses uh, access to some advanced testing features uh, that help them uh, testing some advanced scenarios uh, where production infrastructure could not uh, could not have. Um, for example, if somebody wants to test, then one if one of uh, the Kafka nodes in three nodes cluster goes down, then the application behaves correctly. One can easily describe it with integration testing based on um, starting individual dependencies of your test, because these individual dependencies can be manipulated. But with production-like testing, you have either everything or nothing. You cannot uh, manipulate pieces of this uh, production-like infrastructure. And there are some other uh, things. Not to mention that sometimes some developers would want to start, let's say, one database per test so that state is always uh, cleaned between the tests, or like they always start from the same state. And it's it's very it can easily be done with uh, testing tools that are focused on individual uh, services and databases, while with uh, production-like testing, uh, it's, une it's it's very uneasy to uh, um, recreate components of this production environment. Let's say when we talk about this from both cultural and technology aspect, how much do you think that the the movement of whole DevOps or SREs or DevSecOps kind of it has helped? In, in, in kind of uh, making developers embrace these testing practices or has it made it harder? I believe the complexity uh, that comes with testing in modern DevOps world comes not from testing per se, but rather uh, from how DevOps changed how we develop software because it wasn't um, like, there were some changes that made it harder to develop, for example, but easier to deploy. And uh, with the adoption of containerization, uh, Kubernetes, and other approaches uh, for the deploying uh, services, yes, it's now easier to deploy multiple services instead of just one monolith. But on the other hand, it's much easier to test monoliths as compared to microservices. Because, because in monoliths, you have a single thing to test as opposed to many services that interact with each other. You need to introduce contract testing to verify that these interactions are correct. So. There are, of course, some, um, maybe not downsides, but side effects of the transition to, to microservices and some DevOps methodologies. Um, and these new databases that um, were created thanks to these new platforms that we now get access to um, and cloud providers that provide us new uh, technologies, maybe some cloud native technologies, as in um, technologies that are vendor specific to the cloud. Um, they are better in production because they are managed by, the, by this cloud. But for testing, you may find uh, some interesting challenges. So let's say if you want to test Snowflake DB, then this is cloud first database. I'm not even sure if one can run something like cloud, oh, sorry, Snowflake local or a Snowflake emulator. So we need to create these emulators to be able to test our software um, if we want to run it locally, like fully locally and not with some cloud dependencies. Sergey, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about not only the importance of testing, but also how to approach it correctly. So thanks for those insights. And I would love to have you back on the show. Thank you. Thank you, Sapneel. And uh, it's been a pleasure to participate and uh, I'm looking forward to maybe joining you one more time when we have more info to share at the Tom Jar.